Hi, so in video 1256, we actually made an electrolysis cell for urea electrolysis using an egg whisk. Now, Xyloscope suggested this, and it was a really interesting idea. He said, Rob, how do you think that's going to work if you use it as an electrode for a supercapacitor? And what Xyloscope is planning on doing is getting a whole load of activated carbon and ramming it in here and giving a go and seeing what happened. And I think that's awesome. And I'm looking forward to his results and finding out how it goes. But I loved the idea. So I thought I'd give it a go myself. Now, um, I'm not planning on using activated carbon because I have a whole load of this stuff. This is activated carbon felt. Makes it much easier for me. So, <laughs> sorry, Xyloscope. I've got an easy job, mate. Yours is going to be a little bit more difficult. Anyway, the plan is to use a strip of that and wrap that up in here. But I don't think that'll be enough. So I'm going to use the wire wool. Remember, this is stainless steel. It's a bit like a sock. So it unwinds until this sock shape. So I'm going to stuff this in the sock, rewind it, then stuff it back in there. And that's going to be my electrode. So let's get this stuffed, so to speak. And a couple of minutes later, and there's my egg whisk electrode. So I put it in this glass jar. They're a bit close. So I've wrapped some kitchen towel around that one just to stop them touching. Now, what we're really interested in this basic stage is not how well does it perform, but can it perform? We want to know if we can put some energy in there and get some energy back out again. It's the first question you ask yourself. So I'm going to use a salt water electrolyte, just ordinary sodium chloride, pour some in there and then stick it on charge and see if we can get a charge in there. Now obviously it's got salt water so the voltage is going to be 1.23 volts at maximum, otherwise it'll start giving off chlorine gas and hydrogen and we don't want it to do that. So let's charge that up at a volt or so, certainly no more than 1.23 and we'll be able to see if we can get that to do something. So there is my egg whisk supercapacitor. Now, clearly, there are improvements to be made on this. We'll give it a go, see how it works, then discuss some of the improvements. OK, so that's it filled up with just ordinary salt water. Now, I made a saturated solution and there's about a litre in there. Saturated solution, load of salt in there, stir it until it stops dissolving and you've got yourself a saturated solution. It is obviously symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which one is negative and which one is positive, and we're going to charge this at 1.2 volts. It's actually drawing half an amp. That's amazing, actually. So it is working in so far as I'm getting some power being put into there. And I'm going to test it on this little motor. and We'll just see if we can get some power back out of it. OK, I've given it about 10 minutes and actually it is accepting the charge. I turned the voltage down to one volt just to make sure there was no electrolysis going on, that it is, in fact, all that double layer formation. And now we give it a go. We're going to just try and spin this little motor with it, actually. And there we go. We do, in fact, have power coming out of that thing. So we know we can put a charge in. We know we can get a charge out. There are going to be problems with this. I mean, because they're far apart, then the effective series resistance is going to be high. But it is a really simple solution. And we're going to be able to store a lot of power in there. It's just that the Coulomb efficiency won't be great. However, there are things that we can do to improve it. I mean, if you remember what we did with the lead-acid battery and plaster of Paris, it might be an interesting idea to mix your activated carbon with some graphite, with some plaster of Paris, uh, bundle up some steel wool inside the whisk, pop the whisk into a former, and pour all of that mix in. And then you'll get a quite a solid, uh, well-permeated electrode that may work really quite well. I'm certainly excited by the idea, so we have to thank Xyloscope for suggesting it, because that motor is still running all of this time I've been talking, which is really awesome. So a really easy way of making a supercapacitor out of egg whisks, which I think is well worth passing on. So thanks again, Xyloscope. And you posted the, uh, uh, the thing there as a, a, a suggestion to everybody else, and I loved it so much I picked it up for the video. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you, Xyloscope, and thank you very much for watching. Oh, please remember to like and subscribe.